Damn. No, uh, no beer today. How about some a little whiskey? My parents think they're real funny and they get me these little pocket shots for Christmas. Like, when am I gonna drink these? I don't know why I'm gonna drink these, but here we go. So I was recently brainstorming for a commercial I'm about to shoot. And how I normally do that is I basically have this curated collection of DPs and directors that I follow on Vimeo. And because I do that, it kind of spits out new commercials all the time. And I use that as a way to get inspiration and get ideas for commercials that I'm about to shoot, kind of look for looks, like take some grabs and inspiration photos from some of those commercials. And I use those as like ways of getting color palettes and stuff like that before I shoot a commercial. So I recently came across this Mercedes-Benz commercial and it reminded me of a color technique that I thought would be something really good to talk about on the channel. So people are always asking me to do a color video, but I think there's a lot more to color than just using a LUT or doing coloring in post. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. We met on an app. Delete it. Why? He's the one. Huh? Gesundheit. <laughs> you have a birthmark in the shape of Texas. You think it looks more like Arkansas. How do you know that? I see something else. A star with three points. You're in a... Mercedes. So of course you can take an image that you've already shot and you can apply different color or LUT to it to give you different tones and to set a mood in the shot. But I found there's a much better way of doing that over just using a LUT or color. You know, there's a lot to making really good imagery. You kind of have to think about each frame as a painting. Actually, one of the uh, cinematography books that I used when I studied um, in film school was called Painting with Light, which kind of sounds obvious at first, but it's something you really need to think about when lighting a shot. But not just lighting a shot, just everything that goes into a shot. When you actually make a frame, a frame that's gonna look really nice, really rich, really professional, you have to think about all the components that are gonna go into that frame and not just what color you're shooting on or maybe what location you're in. Now those both play a very big part on this, but you'll find that there's a lot more to it than just that. So if you actually tried to construct the scene in your head or on paper first and get an idea of what you're trying to create, set a goal for what you're trying to create, you'll find that you'll get a much better product in the end. So let's use this Mercedes-Benz commercial as an example. And so we can look at this, the color technique that they're using and you'll find that it's a much better place to start than just throwing a LUT on your footage. So what's the first thing you notice when the commercial starts? So we start on a wide, we see a couple sitting at a table and they're talking to some sort of fortune teller. So of course there's some really nice lighting in the shot. You can see some shafts of light coming through the background and it's kind of dimly lit to kind of set the mood. But the next thing you'll notice is that they're, they're really focusing on one color palette. You can see that there's a lot of earth tones and greens in the first frame. And they don't stop that. They've built a whole set around these colors. So you can tell when they went into this, they didn't just happen to pick those colors. They didn't just happen to have those colors in the shot. They did this very intentionally to create a mood. So if you notice the woman in the shot's wearing green, the guy sitting next to her has a little bit of green stripes in his kind of tan colored shirt. And then even when they flip shots here, there's a lot more green in the shot there. There's plants in the background and there's a lot of wood tones and earth tones in the background too. So we're dealing with some sort of green or orange in every one of the shots in this scene. So then you're going into it, they could pick a color palette like that and they were already gonna get a nice color base to work off of. So you can tell that even the lighting is a little bit warm. Uh, they're using some tungsten practicals. They even have some kind of uh, fabric over the practicals to give it a nice warm light on their face. And then of of course the light shaft's coming in the in the back and they have some haze in the room to kind of add some more atmosphere and so you can really see those light shafts. The light shafts are kind of directing you to the subjects and then you have the greens and the browns, they're adding a full tone to the scene. This was a great example to show this off and so I thought I would try to recreate it myself so you can see if you have the right components in the shot and you don't have any color applied, you can still get a really nice image in camera. So as usual, I decided to recreate the scene myself. Um, and so I remembered that I have some friends and in their living room, they have some light green walls and they had a nice really dark green couch. So I thought their house might be a good place to start off with it. So I'm gonna try to create a similar vibe and a similar green style scene for the example here. So the first thing to kind of match the shots is I was going to have to have the green in the background, of course, but also they were kind of in a big space, but I didn't really have that much room in this living room. So I just took a chair and I got it as far away from that back wall as I possibly could so I could add some separation from me and the wall and give more green in the background once I put the lens on and kind of compress the background to my face. So once again, I'm using the Panasonic S1H here, you know, that nice full frame look. I'm using my Canon 55 millimeter F1.2. I think I shot all these shots at F2 just to kind of really blur out the background and let those greens kind of melt together, just to really create a nice green color palette behind me. Then I put on a green colored button up shirt, just like the woman in the commercial. 
And I kind of sat at the same angle as they were in the commercial just to kind of get the same idea and get a similar vibe as what they were doing in the Mercedes commercial. And just to top it all off, I grabbed a Key Lime Green LaCroix from their fridge and I drank that because I mean, none of my videos would be complete without me having a drink in the video, obviously. No, it wasn't a beer, but you, you know what I'm talking about. I tend to just use a drink for all my examples in all my videos. What's up with that? So to light this shot and to kind of make it match the original commercial, um, I of course have the uh, shears down in the background and I have the sun beating on those windows, which kind of adds some separation for me on the background. And then I took the lighting technique that I talked about in my last video and I took an Aperture 120D and I uh, projected that through a six by six quarter grid, um, that fabric to help give me a nice really soft key light on my face. So it kind of looks like that light's being motivated from another window on the other side of the living room. And it really blends in really nicely. I got the levels kind of similar, you know, my, my face is a little bit brighter than the background, which is kind of nice because it adds the focus to my face. So I have a wide shot here so you can kind of see the whole space, you can kind of see all the greens, and then I cut into a close-up of my face. So what I did is I raised the camera up a little bit during that shot rather than keeping the same eye line as the original wide shot. That way you could get some more of that green from the couch coming in behind my head just to add the overall green feel to that shot. And then I want a close-up of the LaCroix, of course, so I can have that green contrasting off the green in the background. Um, and that's kind of a low shot seeing the can so you can see the couch in the background giving more of that green in the background. So we're working all inside of a green color palette, but they're all different brightnesses and shades. And so you still have contrast in this shot, um, but they're all working inside that similar color palette. So you can see right here straight in camera, if I just put the uh, file in a more Rec. 709 color space, we are, we're already gonna have a really nice, rich looking image without adding any more extra color or a LUT to this image. Then we can obviously push around the image a little bit more and add a little bit more flair to it, a little bit of extra color, and you can get an even more rich image out of it because we've already had an amazing color palette to start with. We can bump the greens up even more or we can add a little bit of warmth on my face if we want to. And we're gonna get a similar color palette as that Mercedes-Benz commercial because we already have the colors in the background to match. And we're not trying to force anything by pushing and pulling around the hues and saturations in posts without having a nice color palette to start with. So next time you go to watch some commercials, start looking for this kind of stuff. Look at the wardrobe, look at the background, look at what's going on in the frame from a base color standpoint and not what they just did with the color grade. You'll notice that a lot of commercials are using a lot of blues, people have jeans on, denim on, and they're using that to set a color straight in camera and not having to worry about it as much later. This is a really good technique too if you have a little bit of creative influence on set but you're afraid once you hand off the footage to a client, they're gonna take your colors and push them around in a way that you didn't want them to. Well, this way you already have a nice uh, color palette to work off of to at least give yourself a little bit better of a color of what you were looking for in camera itself. Well, this is just a technique I thought would be really helpful for you guys. You know, when you're going back to what I said earlier, when you're creating a shot, you really need to think about all the components in the shot and not just getting a little bit of nice lighting and shooting on a good camera. And then just hoping you can make something extra pretty in post. Get as much of the components right when you hit record so you're getting as much as you can in camera itself not having to worry about it later. And that goes for lighting, it goes for the location, that goes for set dressing, that goes for wardrobe, that goes for makeup. There's a reason you have all these components on a, um, a major feature film or a commercial is because all those components add up to a really nice, beautiful image. And this also allows you to play around with different color contrasts in your scene. Um, you know, for instance, like in Hollywood, uh, teal and orange is a big color palette that you see a lot, or green and orange. And you can just start by using those colors on set to give yourself a nice baseline. Well, I hope this technique was helpful. Um, I'll definitely make a video on color correction and color grading in the future. But I just wanted to get this video out first because I think it'll really help going forward and in the future when we start talking about color grading and my color techniques in post. So let me know in the comments, is this something you guys already think about and this is just like an obvious technique or is it something that really enlightened you and you thought that it was helpful? Definitely let me know in the comments below or just simply give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And until next time guys, I'm Spencer Sakurai, see ya.